there, friends. Welcome back to Second Star to the Left. I'm Michelle, and this is my daughter, Billy. Pumpkin. <laughs> and here's where we'll share board game reviews, ramblings, and a few wrong turns along the scenic route. Finally here, the end of September, and this is my favorite time of year. The cooler weather, the leaves, spooky movies, and the end of the no-buy challenge. This was an idea that came from a late-night Disney discussion on Discord, but it turned into a really interesting experiment. We'd previously done a no-buy June, but that wound up resulting in a buy-everything July. You remember this fiasco. Two months was way more difficult, and I learned a bit more about my buying and playing habits. But let's start with Games In and Out this month. For Games In, we have B-Movies, and no, we didn't break the challenge. This was a Kickstarter that we backed, and it was delivered this month. It's a party game by Yan and Clem and published by Colossal Games, where you're a screenwriter pitching your B-Movie ideas to producers. You create your pitch from a hand of cards that each have a single word and some spectacular B-movie poster-like artwork on them. Other players vote on whether or not to greenlight your idea. It's creative storytelling game that we just did a small overview unboxing on if you want to check that out. As far as Kickstarter this month, I was gifted two Unsurmountable by Scott Alms and published by Button Shy. This is the next game in the Simply Solo line, and I love Food Chain Island and Ugly Griffin Inn. You're using your cards to work your way up an unsurmountable mountain. These little solitaire games hit the table often. And you've heard me declare my love for all things Button Shy a million times. In fact, one of the first things I did this morning was back their Patreon Board Game of the Month Club. If you love these little wallet games as much as I do, go and have a look. I'll put the info in the description below. I'm thinking of doing a series of reviews on the wallet games and other small box games. If this is something that people would be interested in, let me know. We really like small games here. The other Kickstarter that I was gifted was The Gardens. And this one was designed by Matthew Dunstan and Brett Gilbert and published by Grill Games. I was heartbroken that I was going to miss this one. And by the way, the vote is in from the last video and you all agreed with me that Billy backing these as gifts when she had already dropped out of the challenge for an Avatar RPG hey. did not break any rules. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> this game where you're building out a stroll through Sydney's Botanical Gardens seems like exactly my kind of game. Card drafting, tile placement, beautiful art. I watched the Thinker Themer review and I was completely sold or, you know, Billy was for me. <laughs> anyway, that's what came in this month and what we backed. As far as games out, we are seriously slacking. And while I have a running list of games that are going to go, they're all still here sitting on the shelves. I did get more shelves though, so you know, it doesn't look so crowded. <laughs> Does that count? <laughs> Let's talk about how many games we played this month. The totals are 64 plays. And out of those 14 were games we hadn't played before. Not buying new games has definitely meant that we're playing our shelves. Some off of our shelf of shame and some we played with others off of their shelves. Board Game Arena also continues to get a lot of use and we played a couple of games on there that we had never played before, as well as getting soundly trounced in a couple of tournaments. BGA continues to be one of the best tiny investments we've made in gaming. We can play with friends from all around the world and playing async means we don't even have to worry about time zones. Since we managed 63 plays this month, which is way more than we had been playing, I thought it would be fun to rank them and see what our favorites were. My list would look a bit different than Billy's because I play a lot more solo games and on BGA, and I managed to escape with my sister for a weekend of games and sheep. There'll be a video about that hopefully Monday. We had such a great time. Anyway, here is my ranked list of games played. I did 
did play a lot of new games, only one of the new ones made its way directly to the top five. And that would be number five, Monikers by Alex Haig and Justin Vickers, published by CMYK and Palm Court. We have both the original version and the Shut Up and Sit Down version, and they've been sitting on a shelf for far too long. We brought this one out while we were down the shore and my mom was visiting. It's basically charades with three variations. You draw cards and in the first round you can describe the word or phrase on each card using as many words as you want. In the next round, using the same stack of cards, you describe each word, each card using just one word. And in the final round, you act out the clue like it's charades. It seemed like a simple game that would work just like charades, but there is something about using that same stack of cards for all three rounds, a stack that's been chosen by the players to begin with, that creates this series of in-jokes that build and build off each other until you're laughing so hard that you can't give the clues. We didn't really keep score. We didn't play competitively. We just played and laughed until we cried. Sure, you could play this by scraps of paper in a bowl, but this sit contains great subjects that you wouldn't have thought of. And it's a tiny box to bring somewhere. It just brings so much joy. I will say that we had one person who did not like the game, but they don't like being put on the spot for games. So I can see why this one wouldn't work for them. By the last round, we were all having fun. I'm not sure I'd be able to convince them to join in again, but that's not to say that I'm not going to try. At number four this month, we had another party game. I mean, we were away, so we played together often as a group. This is one of our favorites, and it's Monstrosity. I've talked about this game before. This is one that even the grumpiest non-gamer in our group requests to play. In Monstrosity, a crime has been committed, and you're the witness. You have 20 seconds to look at a card with a monster on it, and then without looking at the card, you have two minutes to describe it to everyone else who are all acting as sketch artists. Everyone flips their cards and votes to see whose drawing is closest to the card and to see if you're a credible witness. This game has climbed up all of our lists probably to be our favorite party game. Oh, and there's a shut up and sit down expansion coming? We're all in. Created by Eric Slauson and published by Bread and Circuses, if you haven't tried this one, you really should. Especially if you're a fan of games like Fake Artist Goes to New York or Telestrations. I also <laughs> recently found out that you can play this game online if one if what if one player has roll twenty. If one player has it on roll twenty. If one player has it on roll twenty. We haven't tried it yet because I couldn't purchase any games and one player needs to own it on roll twenty. Better? Yes. All right. But I'm hoping to play it online soon and, you know, convince everyone else that they should love this game. My number three that I got to play, both in person and on BGA, and that's Welcome To. I always list other games as my favorite and right. Roll and right, flip and right, whatever. But then I always play Welcome To. The BGA implementation is amazing and it's a lot of fun to just have a rolling game going at all times but there's something so satisfying about playing on the actual sheets. Plus, now that it's spooky season, we also have the Halloween version. Extra points <laughs> for ghosts and candy corn, yes please. Quick and fun, try it out any way you can. Designed by Benoit Turpin and published by Deep Water Games, Welcome To is our number three this month. My top two games won't come as a surprise to anyone at all but I got to go away for the weekend and show them to my sister, who it turns out loves them as much as I do. At number two is Botnik, created by Frank Critton, Gregoire Largi, and Sebastian Pachon, and published by Space Cowboys. I've told you how much I love this game. It's tile drafting, tile placement, tableau building, two player game. Mecha botanists trying to build the best machines to create food and plants to save the world, or <laughs> rule the world. I don't know. Either way, the art in this is thematic, floral, steampunk style that really works. And after the first time I showed this to my sister, her immediate reaction was, let's try again. And this reaction was repeated <laughs> several times. It's simple to learn and harder to get good at. And it's one of those games I will always say yes to. We did a video a little while back on it. If you want to learn more, I'll put the link down below. And number one, can you guess? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's Paris. La Cité de la Lumière. Is that upside down? I cannot get enough of this game. Created by Jose Antonio Abascal Acebo, getting better at that, and published by Devere Games. Building both the cobblestone streets and then on top of that, the buildings of Paris. Making sure that all your buildings are lit by the glow of the streetlights. Don't forget that. Okay, that sounds beautiful and romantic. And it is, honestly, gorgeous, swoon-worthy artwork. But don't let the pretty pictures fool you. This is a tight little strategic puzzle that can be pretty cutthroat. It's another game that my sister immediately requested to play again because you're always sure you can do better the next round. You're always sure you have the strategy figured out this time. This is easily my top game this month and will probably show up pretty high on the list at the end of the year. My sister and I want to do a playthrough video of this one in the future, but mostly we just want excuses to play this one more. Okay, what was your favorite game this month? Clank, for sure. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe we missed out on it for so long. Yeah, I don't know what we were thinking. Uh, well, so as far as our unplayed games shelf, we did really well this month. We actually got to all six games that we had put on our challenge. We wound up playing eight games off of our unplayed game shelf. The games that we got played from our challenge were Awkward Guests, finally. We only got to play this one once, so we want to play some more before talking too much about it, but we loved this one once we figured it out. We definitely need to play it more. We played Villainous Perfectly Wretched. For some reason, we hadn't played a lot of Villainous lately, so bringing this new one to the table reminded us how much we love this game. Plus, we were inspired by Jeff and Jamie's video over at Foster the Meeple, where they had a huge Villainous draft tournament. If you haven't watched that yet, head over and see it. I'll put the link down below. New characters were fun to play with, but I'll be honest, while we've played the other expansions, there are still so many combinations that we haven't played that it always feels like a new game. Mm -hmm. That definitely says something about replayability. Also, I really need the last set to complete our collection. <laughs> what? No buy month is over. <laughs> <laughs> We also managed to play Survive Escape from Atlantis while we were down the shore. Billy and I liked this game, but it was a definite no from the rest of the family. A complete swing and a miss. Have you ever played a game and some of the players just obviously hated it? Were those players grumpy non-gamers who let you know that they hated it? Oof, it was rough. Billy wants to keep this one. I thought it was okay. I would call it. It's not great at two, and other people here aren't going to play ever again. They're just mad because I won. <laughs> yeah, okay. Plus, if I have four gamers here, it isn't one that I'm going to reach for, so we'll see what happens. We played Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition and Atlantis Rising in August, both of which we really liked and stay in our collection. So we won't spend time on them this month, but check those off that challenge list. We got to the expansion for Everdell this month. We played with Spirecrest. I'd played Everdell before, but Billy never had, so I just threw her in with the <laughs> expansion. This game is so adorable. A hedgehog riding a moose with a saddle. Come on. <laughs> I'd like to play this a few more times and then decide if we need any other expansions. It, we do. It's possible. <laughs> And last but not least, we finally played Clank. Yeah, I know. We should have played this forever ago. We loved this game. You guys should have told us it was good. No, I'm just <laughs> Nobody kidding. ever said Clank was good. <laughs> this game reminded me that I love deck builders. And there was a time when deck builders were my tile placement games. And by that, I mean I was obsessed with them and wanted to try them all. So I'm not sure how Clank slipped by. Exploring a dungeon while trying not to disturb the dragon and that glorious tension when you're reaching your hand in the bag to see who will take the damage from waking the sleeping dragon. It's perfect. You're actually holding your breath to see what happens when you refill the row and see if a dragon card shows and when you reach in the bag to see if you're going to take damage. Yeah, and setup is a bit fiddly, but the board makes it uncomplicated, and once you get the hang of it, it goes fairly quickly. This one will get played often, you know, now that it finally got played once. <laughs> so it's over! The challenge is complete! 
And some of us made it through. So now what? Do we go back to our old habits? Do we go on a huge spending spree? Yes. Well, no. And yes, but only a teeny one. I have a few Kickstarters I want to back, or, you know, back to this morning. And so, Verdant and Light in the Mist. You were up at, like, midnight. <laughs> as of today, I joined Button Shy's Game of the Month Patreon. But as far as new games, one thing I have figured out during this challenge is that the games that I might have bought on Impulse are not necessarily games that I need or will play. Pretty sure that's how the unplayed game shelf gets so insane. So our new plan is to put things on a list for a week. If we still want them then, we can get them. It should stop some of the purchases, but we had two months to make the list, and two months is more than a week. So are we going to pick up or pre-order a few? Or honestly, by the time you're watching this, I will Bosk, thanks to Doolin over at Table Knots, tops the list. I can't resist that gorgeous theme. Night Cage, because it's Halloween, although I have decided to pass on Patchwork Halloween. I just don't see us playing that much. See? Restraint. We pre-ordered Horrified American Monsters. I am so excited to paint the Jersey Devil. <laughs> Those minis are awesome, and I can't wait to play that one. Uh, and we pre-ordered Paper Dungeons, which is a roll and write dungeon crawl, so that should be great. September has been a great month here, both for games and just in general. Spooky season is in full swing now. We can even start decorating and getting Halloween candy. Yay! Thanks for watching. If you like what you see... Or if you want to keep watching until we get one right... Please like, subscribe, and share. You can find us on social media and all the info will be down below. As always, open tables, open minds, and play your shelves. Bye. <laughs> hey, why are you waving you at me? You have to own it on Roll20. Yeah. Roll20 I... itself is free. So every player would have Roll20. You can do it again. You're meditating on the answer. Yes. All right, meditate faster. It was going well, right? Until the part where you were a dork. I'm not. A... I'm gonna put that in the bloopers, and everyone <laughs> will see how mean you are. Oh, I'm very nice. You are not. <laughs>